I'm John from Nick Clinton Gaming, and I love when I get requests for videos because it, you know, gives me inspiration on what to do next and lets me know what people want, and then I can go and help them. So, in honor of that, I've got this comment from this Hexmort 2022 fellow who uh, commented on my uh, most viewed video about the Google Play authentication with Firebase and Unity. And he says that he wants to make a game registration system in Unity, a system that can be registered by logging in with a Google account, and he wants to record the person's name, email, password, the points that they have, some in-game money, a special game currency, a profile picture, a player name, scores, password renewal, registration, login, and after the registration process is completed or after logging in, it's supposed to close the screen and direct them to a game screen. And he wants to pull the data from the server with the recorded scores and make a scores table and he wants to make data like weekly scores and monthly scores and he wants to integrate the game points with the server and connect the game money to the server and he wants their personal data recorded as well so let's go and break these down into parts because that's what I do when I tackle problems or do um, work for other people when I do um, commissions yeah I take the problem I break it down I jot down in my notebook how exactly do I want to solve this problem so his things are pretty simple he wants the name email password I don't know if he should actually you know track their passwords um, that's not very ethical can you do it absolutely is it ethical to track people's passwords and their emails not at all because people tend to use the same password with all of their emails and different logins so um, definitely not ethical there but you can do it um, he wants to track their points in the game, the game money, special game currency. Those three things, definitely doable, very easy in Firebase. Um, we just create a special class for that. Uh, he wants their profile picture. Now, tracking pictures is a bit more difficult. Firebase does have a way to track pictures, but tracking pictures in Firebase is costly because you either need to save it to the uh, Firebase cloud service, I think it's called, um, or you need to convert the picture to a bitemap and then convert it back and that takes a long time to convert pictures especially if it has any sort of decent resolution. Uh, when I was testing this years back or so, um, I noticed I was testing with a like, 4,000 pixel um, Spider-Man picture or something like that. And if I did like a 200 by 200 picture, it would take me about one minute to convert back from the uh, byte array. Um, however, when I used a large resolution photo, something that was like 1024 by 1980, for example, it was taking me up to 15 to 30 minutes on a decent computer to convert from the byte array back to a image texture which I can convert to a sprite. So what I say instead of actually saving their pictures, you can let them share the 
web the link to the picture the website link so you can share like your Facebook picture you could share something off of Google you can upload something to your um, Google Drive and make it public and then share that link um, and do it that way but then it adds a lot of responsibility to the user so what I recommend is doing this with uh, Cloudinary Cloudinary is like a Google Drive but for pictures and Cloudinary can send and receive pictures nearly instantly it's the fastest you know most robust way of sending pictures and videos and you can even add little um, tidbits to the end of the link because it will after you upload an image to your cloudinary it will tell you what is the link that the image was uploaded at and you can add extra things like saying uh, www.cloudinary slash my user account slash my special code slash um, the image name and then you can say like W100H200 which would give you a width of 100 and a height of 200 you can also add things like B5 which would add like a 5 pixel border around it and other um, CSS similar um, tags that you can add to the end of the URL that's the word I'm thinking of okay let's continue on those so that's profile picture player name very easy same thing as saving their personal name the scores um, I'm not too sure exactly what they want by scores but I assume it would be the same thing as like points game money special game currency but we'll add a separate integer value for tracking scores um, password renewal registration login that is all done automatically with Firebase thankfully uh, but it does sound like they want to have the option of either Google Play authentication or a simple email authentication now what we can do is we can have them sign in with an email and then we can perhaps either send them a uh, verification email to verify that the email is actually valid otherwise you can say a at a dot com as your email and that would go through and actually log them in even though it's not a valid email because there's no um, email service called a dot com that I know of um, so yeah there may not be but after you do that initial password login it's a very simple command to send a password reset to that email and then it's very simple to test the login and to send registration as well so without further ado let's just hop right into these little questions that the guy has so if I move this over I've got my blank project well not terribly blank if you see I've got my uh, text mesh pro my uh, little video here is kind of covering it a little bit but I've got text mesh pro added and I've got a GUI kit uh, that I purchased off of the unity store but that just comes with some graphical user interfaces to make my buttons look pretty you can of course get it yourself and then I've got my scenes folder which only has my demo scene and my scripts which as you see is blank and empty now to tackle this problem it is wholly based around Firebase so the first thing we want to do is we want to well the next thing we want to do is we want to go into Firebase to create a project now as we are creating the project we will be asked to provide a few details about our game so let's go to our project settings that opened on my other window so let me drag it over 
Uh, so right now I've got default company and product name as my project. That's the name of your app. I'm just going to go ahead and change my company name to Nickthin Gaming. If you have a company name that you want to provide, I definitely do it here. If you have like a YouTube channel, you know, you can do your YouTube channel name or a username that you want to be known by. That's much better than going with default company. And as for the project, I will just call this, um, I don't know, detailed Firebase demo. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to go to our other settings. And in our other settings, in identification, I'm going to turn off override default package name. And right now, I see com.nickthengaming.default firebase demo. And that's going to be the package name of this game. If you don't want to use the default of com.companyname.app name, you can definitely unclick this and type in your own one here. But I have never seen a reason for that. Um, and just to let you know, I am currently on the Android build, but you can definitely do this from a Windows build. They have the same options in their Mac App Store options and the bundle identifier. So your bundle identifier is the same thing as your Android uh, package name. Okay, but now that we have that package name copied, we want to go to our Firebase. And if you are following my Google Play authentication, make sure that the Firebase account that you use is the same as the Google account that you used for your Google Play console. Otherwise, you will have issues. All right. So now I've got my Firebase opened. I just clicked the Add Project. Um, you'll need to log in or create an account, of course. But thankfully, it's totally free, um, with exceptions. So not totally free, but it is free in the beginning. OK, as for the project name, I will continue with my project name of, oh, that's not what I wanted. There we go. I'm just going to go with the project name of Detailed Firebase Demo. I'm even going to add some spaces in here, make it all fancy and nice looking. I'll click Continue. Um, you can enable Google Analytics if you want, but I will turn it off for this. And it's just going to take a moment to create our project. Now, after we create a project, we're going to link our uh, Unity uh, project, which is why we need that bundle identifi identification code, or the package name as it's called to, as well. Um, and then we're going to need to download a few things from Firebase, especially our Google JSON. Um, and then we need to turn on our either real-time database or Firestore. Um, and then we, yeah, go from there. Okay, so yeah, let's get started by adding Firebase to my app. I'm going to click the Unity. Then I'm going to say I want to register as an Android app. If you eventually want to have this on Macintosh devices, you can definitely register as an Apple app, uh, Apple being a product of the Macintosh Corporation. Um, but I will just be going with Android app. And even though this says Android app, it still works perfectly fine with um, Windows builds. I'm going to move my face over a little bit so I can click these buttons in the bottom left. I'll click register app. It will take a moment. The next thing we want is we want to download the config file. You must do this. This will give you a Google services JSON, which as you see by this very detailed uh, image that we will drag this file to our assets folder in Unity. 
I will click next and if you don't already have it you will want to download the Firebase Unity SDK and you can follow these instructions exactly and this is one way to add it by going assets import package custom package you will need to unzip the zip folder first um, however I will be doing it a different way where we just double click on the unity package and then it adds it because thankfully we are not dealing with older versions of unity anymore and finally continue to console we now see my app added up here if you want to add another one maybe you want to add a website or another uh, unity project to the same firebase um, database then you click add app and just do that but now i will go to build and let's go to authentication so as always let's just click that get started to well get started so from the description that i have that the person sent they want an email and password authentication and you can just enable email and password we can also enable the email link let me move my face back down where i want it there we go so the email link would be a passwordless sign in as it says so you need to type in a few extra lines of code and it will send an email to the person and then the person clicks on that link in their email and it says okay you're now signed in that way you don't have to deal with passwords at all and as you see you can just click these links to see how it says you can do it now of course doing things in unity is very different than doing it in android or the web and firebase documentation is not complete and i doubt it ever will be um, but that's something you can definitely look into now it's not one of the things that the person specifically asked for so i am going to leave it out if you want to add other things we can go add new provider and here's where you can add the google and play games if you want to allow those extra logins uh, but you can definitely see those from the um, google play authentication with firebase and unity 2023 okay I believe I said that wrong earlier um, video that I have on my YouTube so definitely check out my other videos I'll just be going over an email and password sign in with this one but okay the next thing we want is we want to go with the database now you will see that we have a fire store database and a real-time database and it can be a bit hard to decide which one do you want and from my understanding the Fire Store database lets you send and receive data much faster with much less internet connection. However, they only allow you to connect so many times a day. So you're limited by the number of daily connections and you're limited by the amount of data that you can store. So Fire Store can easily get to the paywall there. And as long as you don't have your cards connected to your Firebase and no plans in the bottom left, you know, then you should definitely be safe there. Um, with, you know, not receiving ghost charges from Firebase. And the real-time database, which is what I usually go for, um, allows you to connect as many times as you want a day. You can do as many you know read and create and crud functions as you want but you can only have 100 simultaneously connected users which means you can only have 100 users sending and receiving data from the database at one time for the free tier you can of course upgrade quite high for um, small amounts of money um, now I do have the real-time database in most of my videos so 
I'll just go with the Firestore database for this, just to, you know, have this tutorial about that. And Firebase is the newer one. If you ever really want to know which one should I really go with, should I go with um, Firebase or should I go with um, real-time database, then just go to your favorite web browser and type uh, real-time database versus Firestore. And the top link, choose a database. Cloud, Firestore, or real-time database. And it gives you this really basic quiz. There are like five or six questions here. And it says, you know, just basic questions for you to answer. So my app uses date uses a database for is it synchronizing data with basic queries or are we doing advanced querying, sortings, transactions, stuff like that. And this is just storing our points, money, currency, names, scores, name and email and password which bit sketchy. We shouldn't really be saving people's emails and passwords. But I will, for the sake of this, just know that the ethics are not on your side there. Um, but, um, yeah, so we are just synchronizing data with basic queries. So this says, you don't need advanced stuff, we recommend real-time database. Then we go on. So what is the usage? We are only going to be updating you know, not often. The data will change um, infrequently and small amounts of data will be changed when those things do change. Perhaps we'll update data on application pause or close or we will um, do it once every five minutes or as data changes even. But I'm just going to say that it's just a few gigabytes of data or less that changes frequently or hundreds of gigabytes at to terabytes of data that is read much more often than it is changed. So we really don't have much of either but I'm just going to say that it changes frequently because we're going to be doing things like changing the money and the currency quite often so let's go with that and the structure of my data. How do I want it organized? And really with the data model, they are fairly similar between uh, real-time database and Firestore. Um, and you can store both as JSON anyways which is probably the best, but we'll just go with the JSON. And then, what are our available needs? Do we need to have, you know, constant reliability? Or, you know, is at least most of the time fine? So, I believe it gives you the same answer no matter what you do. Um, and then my app will need to perform queries on devices with limited or no connectivity. Well, most devices are rarely, you know, have poor connection unless you're some giant mogul. So we'll just go with frequently. But now you see that we have four for real time and two for Firestore. So the overall recommendation for this is real-time database. However, if one of these things is a non-starter, so if you must have the perfect connection, then Firestore. If having decent connection is perfectly fine, then real-time database. Or if the role of the database, it must be this, you know. So go with your needs, of course but that's one link that you can use. But we'll be using Cloud Firestore even though I prefer the real-time database just because I don't have a Cloud Firestore yet. 
okay, we will also start in production mode. I do believe I have a video on the real-time database rules, and the database rules are pretty similar between Firestore and real-time database. Just the syntax changes a little bit as they try to get fancy with Firebase or Firestore. And then you want to set the location of the database. So which server will it be on? You know, we can see quite a bit of them. I'm just going to go with the default United States one. And I'll enable it. And this will create our Firestore database. We do need to go into the rules because we started it in production mode and we'll change the rules here. And just because it's a bit outside of the scope of this video, I'm not going to do anything fancy with my rules. I'm not going to be checking against, you know, if the user is logged in or anything like that. I'm just going to say anyone can access data and I will publish this yep goes right away they've even got these you know cool develop and test monitor things that talk to you about how you manage the rules but okay now we've got all of that done we've downloaded our Google JSON and we've downloaded the Firestore stuff so we want to go back to our unity and we can just hop right into our our authentication and then into our database and I'm just going to set up a very simple um, UI to fulfill this person's wants because I'm not going to build a whole application for it so let's get into that all right so here is my downloads folder with my Firebase Unity SDK extracted. If you don't have the same uh, packages exactly as I do, that's perfectly fine. Unity or Firebase updates quite often. But the first thing we do want is we want our Firebase off. So you can either follow the details that Unity or that Firebase gave you of going to the, uh, I believe it's assets, import, stuff like that, or you can just double click on the Unity package and it will try to import it into your last accessed Unity project. So if you have multiple projects open, make sure that you click on the project that you want to add the Unity, the Firebase Unity package to. I'm just going to leave everything in default, let Firebase do whatever it wants, because if you get errors, it's going to be because you play with this part right here and try to leave off some stuff. And you can even get errors by leaving out some nonsensical Firebase icon that they want to add. So we'll wait a moment for the auth to be added to our project, and then we'll go back to our folder and we will add the database. So we'll come back after this and I will add the database with you. Alright, so everything has finished importing, my script assemblies have recompiled, and I get this enable Android auto resolution and we definitely want to just enable that and we will see this screen pop up, it's going to do some Android stuff and I say just let it run if you see that no progress is being made after a significant period of time um, then just go ahead and close it and it will just redo it later but we're just gonna leave that to do its stuff and come back after it has closed itself alright now everything has finished with my Firebase off, so the next thing to do is to add the database. Now you see that we have the Firebase database and the Firebase Firestore. You want to add the one that you added. So if you add the Firebase real-time database, then you want the Firebase database. If you add the Firebase Firestore, then you want to add the Firebase Firestore. 
If you want to use both, there's nothing wrong with using both, except it's a bit odd. You can definitely add both. However, I've only added the fire store. Well, perhaps you want to add the data that changes often to the database, and then the data that is read often and queried a lot to the fire store, or even separate it that way. So, you know, two options for you but we added the fire store so I will double click the fire store make sure I'm not changing the name and it will open it in my unity project and just like before we are going to import everything that it recommends uh, thankfully because this is the second firebase uh, package that we will be adding um, it will not need to import everything but just go with the default that it recommends at least that is my recommendation okay there we go I needed to click on it and yeah we see right away there's a big folder of images that it's not adding again so you know just don't mess with stuff and click import and then it's going to take a moment and do everything that it did before to import these things, reassemble your script, stuff like that. So just let it happen, go off, do some exercises, drink some coffee, whatever you do while you're waiting for Unity to do its thing. And we will come back after it's done. Alright, so now everything has been added and we just have one more thing that we need to add, which is going to be the uh, Google uh, JSON script which we just need to drag and drop so let me move my face over one more time make sure that we are in the assets folder and let me go back to my downloads let me move this off screen just in case and I will drag and drop my Google services JSON and we'll see that little special icon on my cursor and just drag and drop it in there and that should be the last thing that we need to do to activate our uh, Firebase with Firestore okay now let's go into our scripts we're going to write a few scripts to get our stuff working and then we will uh, first test it out with dummy data and then if the video is not too long we will go through and actually um, add some stuff on top of it add some UI to go with it so without further ado, in our scripts folder, let's go to create C sharp script. And I am going to call this Firebase Auth. And this will handle all of my auth authentication. So let's go create an empty object. This will hold Firebase Auth in my hierarchy. And I'm just going to drag my Firebase auth script onto it so that way I now have the script running in my scene. Because it, unless it's a static script, um, then it doesn't matter where you put it because, well, it's, you know, not there. And it's just going to take a moment to clear everything up. Okay, there we go. Now it's added. I will double click on my auth and it's going to open up my Visual Studios. Alright, my Visual Studios is open. I've got the script ready. But before we get started, I'm going to do something a bit different this time. I had someone ask me the other day, um, hey John from Nathan Gaming, how do you know what to do? How do you know, oh hey, this is how you do the email and password authentication in Firebase. You know, how do you actually know how to do that stuff? And the answer is, most of the time, I don't. I 
read the documentation, I search the internet, and most importantly, I test. So, for Firebase, we see this little file at the top right that says go to docs. And if you click that, you will go to the docs. And yes, it's a bit complicated and confusing, filled with lots of stuff, um, but with just a little bit of help, you can get through it. Okay, so if I go to build authentication, we can even use the search bar. So if I typed Unity auth, but now I can go to Unity and let's do password authentication. That's the one we want. And yeah, because it is Firebase, lots of this stuff is lacking quite a bit. Um, and it will even give you stuff that only works in Java or Kotlin or JavaScript instead of C Sharp, which is what you need for Unity. God forbid you ever tried to use this with something like um, C++ in Unreal Engine, if that's even possible at this moment. But okay, so first it says, Access the Firebase Auth, Firebase Auth class. The Firebase Auth class is the gateway for all API calls. It is accessible through Firebase Auth default instance. And that is true most of the time. So I'm going to copy this. The next thing we will want is we want to create a password-based account. To create a new user account with a password, complete the following steps in your app's sign-in code. So we have auth.createUser with email and password async. And we'll get to that later. But first, let's go to our Unity project. And let's create a function just to separate this. And let's say void um, enable authentication going to take anything and let's paste that Firebase off stuff that we see in the beginning and in the start let's call this enable authentication. I'm actually going to delete the update because I don't see a use case where I will be using the update. And I'm even going to make this a little bit easier since I'll be using Firebase off a lot. I will just remove Firebase off. I will press Control period. And let's see if I can. OK, let me see. Uh, I see the issue. OK, so we do want Firebase off just because I named this class Firebase off. So that's unfortunate. If anything, because I did name this with a poor name, a name that is already used, I can click rename. I'm just going to change this from Firebase Auth to Firebase Authentication. There we go. And this, if you rename it in this way, it will not only rename your class, it renames the file and changes the name in Unity. So it's an all-in-one function. Okay, now if we backspa backspace, press control period, we can add the using Firebase auth with just the click of a button. So I did that by pressing control period and it added the import. Okay, so now we have our auth. If I want to save that, I can even go up to the top. Now I have a private Firebase auth under the name of auth. The next thing we want to do, according to Firebase, is we want to copy this and I will talk you through every step of the way. So next thing we want is we want a, let's do an internal void sign in 
let's do an internal void register and let's even do an internal void sign out. Now what internal is, is internal is the uh, visibility of a method. So void register, void enable authentication, void start, these are methods, class or functions as they're also called. Class Firebase Authentication is a class. Using Firebase Auth, the Auth is a class, while Firebase is something called a namespace. If you ever want to upload something to the Unity Asset Store with script, the script must be inside of a namespace. But okay. So when you see nothing, when it's just void enable authentication or int enable authentication, things like that, that means it's private. So it is private by default. You can also say public or there's protected. And just typing things will tell you, you know, you have partial, private, protected, public. Uh, we have internal. Now, if you want to add something to a Unity button, then you should use public. If you do not want to add it to a Unity button, but you still want other classes to be able to access it within the scope of your namespace, then you use internal. If you don't want it accessed outside of the namespace, then you use internal. If you do, you use public. If you don't want anyone to access it other than this class itself, then you make it private, or since in C Sharp, private is the default, you just leave it blank. And I like to just leave it blank. Okay, now I'm going to paste the code that I copied into my register, and we see some issues. We see that we have the email and password saying they don't exist. And that's, you know, just another foresight on um, Firebase's side where they should have given us the whole class or the whole function, really. But okay, we will just type string email string password because what is an email? It's a string. What is a password? It's a string. Unless you want a number password, which would be a bit interesting. But okay, so we have off create user with email and password async. Async means that this is an asynchronous function. Asynchronous means it runs on another task. Another task or asynchronous means it runs at the same time or parallel. So think of it as a normal script. I say do 2 plus 2, 5 plus 5, 6 plus 6. What your script will do is it will do 2 plus 2, then it will do 5 plus 5, then it will do 6 plus 6. If we say to do it asynchronously, at one time it will do 2 plus 2, 5 plus 5, and 6 plus 6, and then show the answer as it gets it. Now, Unity is not a multi-threaded um, development engine, which means that Unity does not work well with async tasks, multi-threaded things, however it's still required by Firebase. And it can handle it with some experience. Um, but know that if you want to display something on the screen in Unity, you cannot update your screen from an asynchronous task or from a separate task. That's why instead of continue with, we also have something like continue with on main thread, which I'm not seeing right now. I might need to add another thing called using Firebase dot extensions, I believe it is. 
And how do I know this? Uh, from Googling. So let's see. There we go. Continue with on main thread has now been added. Now, continue with on main thread says, think of it like this. We have one road. Unity does this, then this, then this, then this, then this. What async does, it says we have one road and then a split. So it does this, 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 and then it starts doing two things at once. What continue with on main task says is, you know, split into two roads, and then when it's done, join again. So it's going to do this, 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 double, 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 one, 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 like that. Um, and if you still don't understand pretty much, you cannot update thing, you cannot update Unity visually with an async task or with a task that is not ran on the main thread. Okay, so this will create a user with an email and password, the given email and password. Then it will, if you cancel it, so if for some reason the create user with the email and password has been canceled during this time, then it will debug.log error, so it will show an error in the Unity engine console saying create user with e email and password async was canceled. Um, I don't think I've ever actually seen the canceled uh, thing be thrown, but you still need to watch out for it. Faulted is much more is the thing that's going to happen every time that you have an error. It's going to be faulted. Now, what that means is you have no Wi-Fi. You did not provide an actual email. You didn't provide an actual password. Something went wrong, and it's going to tell you that with the task.exception. Now, if it is not canceled and it is not faulted, then it will go here and it will call this. Now, as we see here, we have a bit of an error here. So let's press control period and look. Okay, so it seems like it's having trouble accessing our Firebase off for one reason or another. It's thinking that the namespace auth result does not exist in the Firebase auth, which of course it should. So what do we do when we get an error like this? Well, first we try to solve it by, as I showed you, removing this, pressing control period, seeing what options we have available, if there are any quick fixes, and if not, then we would go and do a search on your favorite web browser. So let's go and see why we are receiving this error that we should not be receiving. All right, so without actually looking at the internet, I realized there was a quick little solution. So. When you have a decent IntelliSense added to your Unity, you can scroll over things to see what it is. So if I scroll over task.exception, I can see that the exception is of the type system.threadings.task.task.exception, and it returns the type of system aggregate exception. Now, that sounds a bit confusing, but if we go over here we look at auth result result is equal to task dot result and if I scroll over result I see that the function is system dot threading dot tasks dot task of the type firebase user dot result and it returns a firebase user type so what we want here, instead of auth result, because that no longer exists, 
and Firebase should really know this, but like I said, Firebase does not update their documentation. And it's infuriating, but if we do Firebase user, we see that the error here goes away. But now, because result is the type of user, we cannot get the user here. So we just remove user. The next thing we have to do is we want to actually call the register function here. So if I type register and I say a.a.a .a .a as the email, and then I say the password is one, two, three, and if I run that, now it will actually run. Now, before we actually run this, I will tell you, oh, sorry, not a dot a, we want a, at a, okay. Now, I will tell you that this will not work. I want you to try it out and see if you can solve the issues on your own. All right, hopefully you pause the video. If not, the first error that you would see is you would see it right away tell you that this is not a valid email format. So what it will look for is that the final part of your email is something like com, net, uh, eu, vn, uh, us, some actual accepted ending for an email. It may even go so far as to look at the middle part to make sure that it is a valid email sender. However, I doubt that. But let's change this to a at gmail.com. But there's still one more error, and let's see if you can find that. All right, so if you noticed it, the password is too small. Firebase passwords are disgustingly weak. Um, but, and you can't really add your own securities to it easily. There is a process to do it. I went over a whole explanation in um, the forum of Stack Overflow after having a huge fight with one of the Firebase executives. He ended up getting me banned for a while and then I came back with a whole description of how to actually do it. So yes, it can be done. I've given a detailed explanation of how to do it, but it involves creating your own hosted server, dealing with the Firebase password reset on your own, and going through those processes and it's tedious. So I say just deal with the Firebase weak passwords and let people have their accounts stolen. Or don't do password authentication, do something like email only authentication, then they're bound by the password of their email. Or do um, like a Google or Facebook authentication. But what Firebase says is the password must be at least six characters. So one, two, three, four, five, six would work. Now, if I save this and I go back to my project and I wait for my scripts to recompile and I press play, it will go through and just like this, it will say Firebase user created successfully and give us their ID. So. Let's wait for our Unities to recompile after changing scripts, and we'll come right back. All right, now all we need to do is press the play button, and we can click over to our console when it's done preparing to play, or we have this fun black bar at the bottom, which tells us the last thing posted, pasted in our console. Let me click over there, and yes, it tells me that my user was created successfully. And if I go back to my Firebase and I refresh my users, we now see that we have a user called a at gmail.com. We have no idea what their password is. You should not know what their password is. You should not know what account that 
a at gmail.com goes to. It's unethical. Um, if people find out, they might not use your... Um, application, but okay. We now see that we are creating users. From that, it would be fairly simple to go through the rest of the way. Alright, and this right here is what you would see if you tried to log or if you tried to create a user that already exists. It says that the email address is already in use by another account. And that would be easy enough to get this error here with a little bit of fandangling and send it directly to your user so you don't have to worry about the different things. But okay, now we can register people. We want to be able to log in people and log them out. So, you know what, instead of closing that, let me keep that open just so I can see them. Now, when we sign in, we still want an email and password. So let's keep that. And let's try this out. Let's say off dot. And what I do when I want to know what to do next in scripting is I read it. So when I press the period button, I see all of these different functions and uh, variables that I can access. Now, off dot sign out. What do you think off dot sign out would do? We can actually just cut that and paste it right there in our sign out function. And we see that we've signed out. And actually, let me do this. I'm going to change result. I will rename it. And I will change it from result to user. And then I'm going to copy this delete that part and up at our auth I'm going to paste it so now we have a user okay now auth dot I think I pressed a few buttons there okay there we go auth dot now we have sign out sign in anonymously async so sign in anonymously is if you do not want them to have an email or password However, you do need to enable anonymous sign-in in your Firebase. Okay, we have use app language, we have sign-in with custom token. So custom token would be one of the more advanced sign-ins. Like if I were to talk about my uh, Google sign-in stuff. I believe that uses a token, although a different type. Okay, now we have current user. You would use current user if you want to see if there is a current user. Let's see, send password reset email. Well, here we go. If you want to um, reset an email, we can use this. Oh, there we go. Let me actually cut that. In. Let's make another one. Internal void reset. Password, which will take a string of email, and the only function is it's going to say off dot send password reset email async to the email, which, as you can imagine, will send a Firebase. Firebase will send an email to them saying reset your password, which then they can reset their password with any six characters. And there is, as I said, it's fairly difficult to add security there. Okay. Sign in and retrieve data with credentials. I think we talked about that one. Sign out. We know that one. Sign there we go. Sign in with email and password AC. That's the one we want. So that will, as you can imagine, sign them in with the email and password. Then, 
So we know what happens next. Yes, this would, would sign them in, but we have no idea when it has finished signing them in. So we want to say continue with on main thread, and we'll make a little uh, lambda function is the name of these. So if you wanted uh, another like void after complete, you can have it be a type of uh, system dot threading dot tasks dot task of the type Firebase user, call it task, and then instead of using this lambda function, you can just enter after complete, and it would run this function. But I am perfectly comfortable using the lambda functions like this. We can even take this uh, whole part here where we see is the task cancelled, stuff like that. And we'll say that they are the Firebase user signed in successfully. And the 0 and 1 is just using string format options to add the display name and username to the string. Not in the way that I like to do it, but still an acceptable way. Okay, so that's how we sign in. Now, we also, you might say, one of our things was we wanted to set the user's display name, we wanted to Let's go back to our comment to see exactly what, what we wanted. So we wanted their actual name, we wanted their display name, or their pro their player name, we wanted their profile picture. So we could do all of this in the off, or what might be better is to do this in the database. Let's check our create user. So off dot create user. Yes, we have no way of creating a user with a display name, but we can do something like user dot. And then let's look at what they have. So we have link with a provider like if you wanted or link with credentials to connect it to I believe would be used to connect it with like uh, Facebook or Google. Uh, Re-authenticate and retrieve data so this would sign them in again pretty much. Let's see we can send them an email verification so if you want your users to have a verified email prove that they actually own that email which I definitely recommend then as you register them then you say user dot and then send email verification async and this would send an email to their email address asking them to verify and then every time before you do something you would just do something like um, maybe have an internal bool is verified and then we type git and then we return user can we do the double question mark here user dot is email verified there we go so Okay, that's perfectly fine. User doesn't equal null and 
the user is email verified. So if they are verified, it will tell you, you know, do you even have a user signed in at this moment? And if the user is signed in, is their email verified? And then you can just use this to prevent unverified people from accessing your app. Okay. What else can we do with our user? And this is how I do it, is I just go through and look. So link and retrieve data, link with credentials, get their metadata, get the phone number, and of course, unless you do like a Google or Facebook authentication, you do need to add all of this data yourself through code. Okay, here we go. Update email, update password. So if you want them to be able to change their email, if you want them to be able to change their password, this is how you would do it. If you want them to be able to update their phone number, update their user profile, this is how you would do it. Okay. So we can even have those functions. So if we want an internal void of change email string email internal void change password string that's not a string string password and let's do internal void update profile which we need a user profile I believe but I will come back to that later okay so for change email we say user dot update email async with the email and because it's an async you can use the continue with which would take as we've seen many times already it will take the task lambda function I forgot my there we go and let's just go over this yep so it's not of any special type it just tells us there we go it just tells us that um, things were finished successfully so else we debug dot log firebase user updated their email okay and if you wanted something to you know find out when this happened you can even add something like a unity action which we'll call callback we'll even have this have a return type of a boolean value and then here we say callback false and this would tell your other class or whichever thing runs this function in the callback once it is done sending the email that it has either been successful or unsuccessful now the password is very similar so let's paste it here I will even grab the same unity action let's add it there instead of email I want it to say password instead of update email we want to update password async let me just double check user profile profile okay yep updated there password and then in user profile we want to take a user profile which I will call profile and then I will say user dot 
update user profile async with the profile. And of course we can do all of the continue with and callbacks that we have here. Let's make sure that we grab our unity action again. There we go. And that's how you would update your user profile. Now if you ask what exactly goes into the user profile, well, let's test it out. User profile A equals new user profile. And then what can we say? A dot, yep, so we can have a photo URL, so a URL link to the photo. We can have their display name. We can have their, okay, it's so just display name and the URL of their photo. And that would be a good place to set it. So I can even say something like, make this just void. Updated their profile. And then we can say, uh, internal void update user profile Let's, what was that user profile a a dot photo URL okay so update user not profile but photo URL which will take a string of the URL. Then we want to get the actual user's profile. So we'll say user profile of the user profile equals user dot Let's see, how would we get their actual user profile? Would it be provider data? Okay, so it looks like we might need to create it using their existing uh, phone number and URL because the other thing that we can receive with the user profile is their, okay, display name and photo URL. So let's make a new user profile. Can we, nope, it does not take any other parts. Cool, we can even shrink it down. Then user profile dot photo URL equals URL user profile dot display name equals user dot display name. Okay, let's look at this. Okay, so we need a URI. We can click on it to see what exactly a URI is. And it looks like it's just a format of a URL. And if you don't know what things are, you know, because I'm not familiar off the top of my head with the URI, so let's do Unity URI. Okay, so a URI is a full and absolute URL. It's the same as a URL, 
but it has less validation. Okay, then what if we do something like unity string to URI? Here we go. Stack overflow. Not always helpful. Let me get these cookies out of the way. Just take one moment. There we go. Okay, cookies are gone. Well, if we see any errors after using it, then that would tell us that something was done wrong. And then the final action would be to... Actually, let's copy this unity action, talking about actions. Would be to call our update profile with our user profile that we just created and the callback. Then the last, the next thing would be to update user display name, but instead of URL, it's going to be display name. This is now going to be display name. And this is going to be the user dot photo URL. Oh, looks like there's something else we can do to shorten this. Even better. Great. So, you know. Anytime you see the three dots under something that says Unity can improve this for you automatically, which is great to do. Okay, so we're updating the user photo URL, updating the display name. We change the password, we change the email, they sign out, they sign in, they reset their password with an email. They can register. We see when they have trouble registering and we see why they can't register. The next thing would be to start to affect their actual database. So let's go into that soon. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to access our Firestore data with um, Unity. Let's go to the get started and see if we can find uh, some scripts for Unity. Okay, yeah, basic, add stuff. Okay, here we go. So we want the database get default instance. So let's copy that and we have some simple CRUD commands to follow. Okay, so in my Firebase authentication, I'm just going to go up here and I'm going to say public class Firebase Firestore. 
which will also extend from mono behavior. There we go. And then I'm going to go to the class name, press control period, and I'm going to move type to Firebase Firestore.cs, which creates a new script without needing to go back to Unity and recompile things, all that stuff. Okay, now let's add a start function. And in the start function, we are going to call the void uh, connect to database. I need to rename my Firebase Firestore. Firebase Firestore controller. Let's go with that. And of course it renamed it here, so let's go and remove the controller. And remove that. There we go. Control period. Add using Firebase Firestore. There we go. Okay, now we have an, a reference to our database. If you want this to happen after um, the authentication is done, then we can do something like an internal void connected database. And we'll go to our authentication where we want multiple things to access this. Since we want multiple things accessing it, I'm going to make it a singleton. So I'm going to say internal static Firebase Firestore controller instance. Then in the awake, I'm going to say if instance is empty or null in this case, then I will say instance is equal to this script and I will say don't destroy onload this which means when you go to a different scene this Firebase Firestore will not be destroyed however if you stop here you will have infinitely many Firebase Firestore controllers destroying your scripts and breaking your game. So we need to say else if instance is not null and instance does not equal this, then we want to destroy, and we can't say destroy this, we need to say destroy game object, which is the game object that this script is attached to. Otherwise, instead of just having millions of objects and Firebase controller scripts, you would just have millions of empty game objects, which is still very bad. Okay. And you know what? We can do the same exact thing with our authentication, since we want to be able to access our authentication from other scripts as well. We just need to change a few things around. For example, this Firebase Firestore controller needs to be changed to authentication. And just for uh, keeping things neat and tidy, we should move our functions to where the functions go. Okay. Now, I would say after we are registered or sign in, then I would want to start to access the database. So here I would say Firebase Firestore Controller dot instance dot connect to database. I will also do the same thing when I sign in. Okay. And 
Yes, we do want to actually save an instance of the database. So let's go up here. There we go. The next thing it wants us to do is it wants us to start doing some CRUD commands. So this would be the C in CRUD or create. So let's do, just for now, internal void create data. We will most likely change the name of this, but just to see if it works. And as we see, there's an error with continue with on main thread because we need to add the using Firebase extensions. Okay. We can go into the next one, which is read data. So let's copy that as well. Here are a few things that you can do to keep your data secure. And we will keep looking at the different Firestore commands as well. Okay, create data, internal void, read data. And just real quick, let's test out what we have. So let's say create data and then after we create data we want to read data. So if we go back to our Unity, let's wait for our script assemblies to re, uh, recompile and then we will test out our user. But uh, one thing that we might want to do is we will create a simple controller. But now that I've gone back to Unity, I need to wait for everything to finish updating to create that other controller. Actually, if we just go back to the scripts, let me go up here and let's say public class game controller extending from mono behavior. Let me do control period, move it to its own script. It will just take a moment. There we go. Let's double click it in our solution explorer to open it. Okay. Now all this is going to say is it's going to allow my personal input. I will even have a serialized field string of um, log or let's say sign in email and a serialized field string sign in password. A few things. If input dot get key down, so if I press the key of let's say C, this is to create a new user. So I will say Firebase authentication dot instance dot let me go over to my authentication register ooh that's much better okay instead of C let's go with R I like that so we register a new user okay dot register with our sign-in email and our sign-in password. There we go. Then we say if input dot get key down 
of the I. Then we want to sign in. So, Firebase. There we go. Firebase authentication dot instance dot sign in with the sign in email and sign in password. Then if input dot get key down of the O keyboard, we will sign out. So Firebase authentication dot instance dot sign out. Now we can sign in, we can register, and we can sign out at the click of a button. And after we sign in or create a new user, it should run our um, connections. Let me even do this. Uh, yeah, let's even take out the read dicta. Okay, so game controller. Now, if input dot get key down, and let's go with C. Then we want to create data. So we will say Firebase Firestore controller dot instance dot create data if oh my that was interesting input dot get key down of the key code R. Oh, we are already using R. So let me just go with something else that we're not using. Okay, E. Then I want to read data. So Firebase Firestore controller dot instance dot read data just to see how these work and now let's wait for unity to reassemble scripts we'll need to assign a few more scripts as well so they can actually work but we'll get back to that soon all right so we've got our firebase off let's create our firebase database let me go to my project let me add my firebase firestore controller and finally let's add our game controller okay and drag that over uh, for the email let's test it out with a at uh, gmail.com password of one two three four five six all right I've got my game running now we can look at our authentication refresh it see that we just have one user there now if I click on my game and if I click my R for register, we should see the error, yes, saying that it's already in use. So if I say I, it should sign in. And now we see that they have signed in successfully. If I press O, they should sign out. Okay, 
looks like they should be signing out, but perhaps I'm not printing. Okay. So let's look and see if I do actually print something or not. Okay, that's on me. They sign out and we just never do anything with it. But we can work with this. So if I go to B and I want to press R, now I've created the user. If we look back at my Firebase and I refresh my users, we now see I have B at Gmail as well. That's not what I wanted. Okay. Now, if I go and I press C, we've now added data to the database. If I press E, it tells us what is in our database. And that's good. But if I press O to sign out, and then I press E again. Okay, that works. And C. Okay, because we don't have any security there. But if I had something like the op equals null, then we would see that throwing errors. But I've. Okay, and now we can look and see our collection of what we just added of the document A Lovelace with the name and stuff. So we are near the end of going over the data that the person wanted. I'm of course not going to build the entire project that they've asked for, but um, now we store the profile picture and it's simple enough to add points, game money, special game currency, and scores. But perhaps we should add an update and delete function to this as well. So let's get to that real quick before we end everything. Okay, so the last two things that we want to have so we have full control over things in our database is we want to update data where I've it's pretty much the same thing as create but I change the name from ADA to ABBA and then I do the same set async so as always if you want to know what something does the best thing you can do is to read about it so let's say not sock ref we want Doc ref and then dot so we can access the collection that is a child of this document we can delete it we can see if it equals another reference we can get the data inside of it which is pretty much the same as our read we can see the type of it we can listen now listen is a thing that will show you any changes in the data um, but according to this person the changes will only be made by one person and not multiple people um, and there's no actual multiplayer functionality going on here in terms of needing constant updating so no need to listen but just like before we set the asynchronous results of the user and it will override or update whatever's there then delete we just use delete async and continue with on main task to log out what has happened so these are two functions and I I do believe that using the real-time database is much easier to manage and much more um, it makes more sense.
than the uh, fire store when you want to change things up. So for example, when you're updating data, you might be able to say db dot collection at users dot document at a lovelace dot the next one would be another collection because documents hold collections and collections hold documents so it would be the collection of first and then from there we cannot actually set the async so we would need to go into you know something lower from that, lower than that so that's you know where the issue comes in at with this is it's much harder to change a single piece of the data in Firestore and you would need to change the whole uh, document itself instead um, and then of course delete we just get the document and say delete the asynchronous or delete it um, If you want something better for storing data, you know, check out my real-time database tutorial that will talk about how to do this with real-time database. I just wanted to show how you would do the CRUD and get it working with um, Firestore because I don't have that in a video yet. I will have a better one later. Oh, saw a little bit of that code there. Um, but everything's working and it's simple enough to make the tiny bits of changes to change, you know, the A Lovelace name to points, game money, special game currency. And if you must save their emails and passwords, then, well, you would do it in the same way. Um, so I hope this has helped you. It's one of my longer videos, so... Yeah, but if you have any questions, let me know, and let me know if I can do updates or improvements, and have a great day.